previously on Historical Geocaching. My wife and I are visiting the Archaearium, an amazing archaeology museum at historic Jamestown that shares the stories of the English colonists and Native Americans to the artifacts they left behind. Most recently, we've learned about Pocahontas and how her life was not nearly as much a bed of roses as you might have first thought. establishment of the Church of England in Virginia was fundamental to the transfer of English culture and beliefs to the New World. In the context of the religious conflict in the 16th and 17th century Europe, Virginia was seen as the beachhead of an English empire in North America that would form a powerful Protestant bulwark against Spain's huge Catholic empire to the south. A combination of archaeology, history, and science provides a powerful tool for deciphering mysteries of the past. Jamestown Rediscovery archaeologists and Smithsonian forensic scientists studied four burials from the chancel of the 1608 through 1617 church. The chancel was the most sacred part of a church, and interment within was reserved for clergy and the highest ranking leaders. Some of the burial artifacts include a box with seven fragments of a human tibia and two pieces of a lead ampulla, vessel for holy water, blood, or oil, which confirm the object is a Catholic recliviary. The bone fragments are believed to be the tangible relics of a saint. This remarkable find sheds new light on religion at Jamestown. This is a 3D version of the box, and here is the original. The four men buried in the chancel include Captain Gabriel Archer, a rival of John Smith with possible Catholic leanings, Robert Hunt, the first Anglican minister at Jamestown, Ferdinando Wayneman, a relative of Governor Lord de la War, who was in charge of the ordnance and horses, and finally William West, another relative of the governor who was killed while fighting Native Americans. Since coins are dated, they are welcome finds on archaeological sites. When recovered with other artifacts, they establish the date after which deposition occurred. Excavated coins predating the 1607 fort were in circulation for a long time. Why was there a need for coinage at Jamestown? The Virginia Company was supposed to meet the colonists' needs in exchange for commodities shipped back to England. The small portable objects archaeologists find offer insights into what people of the past valued. Many of these artifacts were carried about in pockets, worn in jewelry, or used as embellishments to clothing. Some symbolized their owner's status, and some revealed how colonists spent free time. House sites and household goods found in the fort give some indication of what the buildings were like, inside and out. Most of the men appear to have lived in crowded barracks-like conditions. Some of the gentlemen had the privacy of their own dwellings, even though a rudimentary pit house or tent. The starving time lasted from the fall of 1609 through the spring of 1610. Two out of three settlers died from starvation, sickness, or were killed by the Powhatans. Archaeologists have found evidence of this devastating period in the food remains of early Jamestown. Soon after the fall of 1609, John Smith returned to England and Jamestown became isolated. Chief Powhatan applied pressure to the needy colony by forbidding his people to trade food and by ordering his warriors to attack any settler they saw. Confined to close quarters within the fort and weakened by starvation, the settlers succumbed to sickness like dysentery and typhoid. To satisfy cruel hunger, they ate anything they could, including shoe leather. 
Survivors spoke of eating rats, cats, dogs, snakes, or what vermin or carrion soever we could light on. Zoo archaeologists who studied animal bones from starving time contexts found evidence of the seven horses brought from England. They had been butchered for their meat and bone marrow. Hacked dog jaws reinforced the desperation that settlers must have felt to turn on their companion animals. Martial law was enacted in 1610 to ensure the survival of Jamestown after the starving time of 1609 through 1610. Archaeologists found that until 1610, small pipkins and dishes were used by individuals to prepare his own food. After the starving time, larger vessels were used to cook and serve food communally by common bakers and cooks. A fleet of ships led by the Sea Venture left England for Virginia in June of 1609. The Sea Venture never made it. Separated from the rest of the fleet by a Caribbean hurricane, the ship was blown toward Bermuda where it wrecked upon the reefs. Ten months later, the Sea Venture survivors sailed into Jamestown on two new vessels they had constructed out of the wreckage and seers growing on the island. The unexpected arrival at Jamestown of the Sea Venture survivors during the starving time spring was the last straw. With food supplies running low and little hope for resupply, Governor Gates decided to evacuate the colony. But as the colonists sailed down the James River, they encountered a supply fleet carrying Lord de la War, the newly appointed governor for life. Veterans and newcomers joined to re-establish Jamestown. With the arrival of de la War in June and a year's worth of provisions for 400 people, attention turned from searching for food to rebuilding the deteriorating structures of James Fort. I find the Sea Venture story quite interesting as my 11th great-grandfather, Stephen Hopkins, was on board this ship. He stayed at Jamestown for four years before returning to England in 1614 to care for his children following the death of his first wife. Not deterred of love or adventure, Hopkins remarried and signed on to return to the New World with the Pilgrims on the Mayflower in 1620, but this time with his entire family. Of course, not everyone chose to come to Jamestown willingly. In 1619, the first enslaved Africans were brought to Jamestown, and the Archaearium devotes several panels to this introductory chapter of what is, in my opinion, the most awful scourge on our country's history. So, while Jamestown is hailed as the first permanent English colony in North America and an opportunity for adventure and wealth building for the gentlemen soldiers that came, I think it is wise for us today to remember that it is also about the beginning of slavery in America. It is where people starved and died. But warts and all, Jamestown is the opening chapter of our American history saga. This is us. This is where we came from. And where we go is up to you and me. Thank you everyone so much for watching this video of my wife and I exploring the Archaearium Archaeology Museum here at Jamestown. Hope you really enjoyed it. If you like this sort of stuff, please consider checking out other videos on this channel. Until next time, this is History Buff TM Photobook signing out. I'm indeed having a blast with the past.